Hey everybody, it's Dogma here. Um, so yesterday, as of the time I'm recording this, it's the 21st, so on the 20th, uh, the creator of Dinkum, James, did a housewarming update show-off, showing off some of the stuff that's coming. Definitely not all the stuff. There's some still some secrets to be, uh, to be found once the update releases. And uh, I really recommend you go and watch the video. It's about hour and 20 that's Todd meowing if you can hear that but um, I'm just gonna go over some of the set in stone things that we got from it and I'm only gonna show still images from the stream that they did I really want you guys to go and check it out yourselves I just kinda wanna do a like minutes rundown of the different things that we saw so to start off he showed us the guest houses so you can purchase guest houses from Fletch I think they're he said 20,000 25,000 and they cannot be upgraded, but they start as the tier one house. So you start go from tent to house to upgraded house. They're going to be that middle tier, just house. Uh, they can be customized, and they're customized with the house customization kits that you get from John. And John does not sell them every day in the video or in the stream. They were recording on a day that he was not selling it, so they advanced the day forward to make to get it from him. Now you can even custom or do the same with the player house, and you can also change the names of the different player houses. So you can change the names of the three new ones as well as your original first player house. You can also now change the fences at the front of the house, so you can get different styles of fence for it. I think you can change it from the hedges to the picket fence to the hardwood fence, all that kind of stuff. So the Houses are a decent bit more upgradable, although they are upgradable for a cost. Next up, the keg recipe has been changed. It is now 10 palm, 3 copper, and 3 iron. And I think it was originally just like 10 palm and 5 iron. So I think it's a little bit better this way. Copper is a bit easier to come by. Uh, the crates and the chests can now be painted using the paint items, which is what we expected. We saw a couple of colored crates and chests in the teaser picture. And we also have a new neutral animal, the frilly. So it'll work a lot like the kidna. It won't attack you unless you attack it. It has an AoE electric attack. So it chomps forward and then it does a spread, or spread out AoE attack. But the chomp is very much like the bush devils. So I assume it'll work the same way. You can kind of jump out of the way, but you got to get pretty far away. And it's very fast. When it's chasing the player, it is, like, chasing you down. So, you know, try not to anger them. But, you know, if, if you do, just you got to fight them. You're not going to get away from these guys. They also drop a Thunder Sack. And I will get back to the Thunder Sack in a little bit. It's a pretty rare drop from what he said. So it's probably similar to the Bush Devils. I think he said a little bit rarer. But we also have a new item. For all those people that were complaining about the bats in the mines, I'm one of them. You could hear me complain in my videos all the time when I go into the mines. I hate the bats. We've got the bat zapper. It's a new item. It is a, like, imagine the bat zapper, the bug zappers you get, you put out in your yard and you just hear them buzzing the entire time. It's like that, but you activate the, the buzz in it. So it works as a torch. It has very low durability, and then when you buzz it or flash it, it stuns all enemies. All, or not even enemies, all mobs get stunned by it. So when you're in the mines, the mushroom crocos and the bush devils will get stunned by it. I think I said it can be recharged, um, but it also instantly kills the bats, so that's the good thing. So if you don't like having to fight the bats, which I really dislike, I don't like having to jump and spear them the entire time, and like miss most of the time so you could just pull it out flash it once all the bats in the area are stunned and it works really good for people who are not trying to fight anything in the mines we're trying to go for a straight loot session in the mines you're running away from stuff flash it stun it run away and so since and i what i was saying about the thunder sack because i'm assuming the thunder sack is what you use to make it and i you can repair them so you make one and you should be good from there on it does have a low durability, though, so you might want to have a couple. 
the mines now have fireflies in them, which should make the atmosphere a little nicer. My cats are going crazy right now. It's probably because I'm talking. Um, it's easier to see water in the dark, which probably is for nighttime on, you know, top level on regular ground. But it's a lot better in the mines now. You can see, like, the coral and stuff below the plants. I don't even know if there's coral. I just said that because whatever. And quartz can now be found in the mines. So if you were having trouble finding quartz, there's an easy way to get a lot of it, and that's going into the mines now. Next up is keybinds. Keybinds have been added to the game. You have an alternate and a primary key. So if you want to, you could have one key do multiple things, or do two things, I guess, using the alternate and primary keys. And you can... Uh, the, it will change the on-screen indicators when you walk up to a chest and it's blank open, you can open it. The scythes are now upgradable. So depending on your farming license, you can get a copper, which swings twice as fast as the regular scythe, or an iron, which swings, I think, the same speed as the copper. I'd assume they didn't specify, but in a 2x3 ahead of you. So you get more range and you get faster speeds, which is nice. New plant that spawns is the desert pea so it spawns in the desert after it rains on either the same day or the day after and it's incredibly rare so say you're in your world and there's a desert that you've never been to ever and you just continue to not go and you go to it eventually there might be a lot of the desert peas out there so it's one of those things that it will take a long time to get up a bunch of them but they will continually spawn as it rains so there's now a lamp for every type of wood, as well as steps and fences, which I think fences was a mistake in the video. That's what they were saying, but they were showing off the steps. So I'm assuming that steps is what they meant. But steps will match all types of wood now, and there's a lamp for every type of wood. Flowers will now always be removed before the flower bed. It won't you know, get rid of the flower if you pick up the flower bed by accident instead of a flower and you lose that flower forever which is good for the desert pea, which is a very rare flower, so you don't want to lose that. There is a new bug fish, and the flower would be the desert pea. We didn't see either the bug or the fish, but he said that there would be one. One of each. And there's a secret new tier of weapons made from a new material. And I'm not sure exactly what that material is. I didn't see anything in the video. The only things we saw in the video were opals, quartz, rubies, um, iron, copper, tin. We saw all the regular stuff. So I'm not sure what new material he's talking about, but we'll just have to see when the update comes out. There's a decent bit of new outdoor furniture, but he did not put in any indoor furniture. And guests are able to buy animals in multiplayer now. The candle hat had its light range reduced, and it's unavailable to buy in thread space now. And the miner hat has been buffed to last 20 minutes, but it is also unavailable in thread space now. And as far as I can tell, that was pretty much all the for sure things that were added. I, I definitely recommend you go and watch that video. He does a lot of Q&A with the Discord questions, the... Um, sorry, Todd's above me now. The Discord questions, the YouTube comment questions that were being asked during the video, it's definitely worth the watch. I've watched it twice now to make sure I got as much information from it as I can. But uh, that's all I could think of, so thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.